time is not long enough for me to tell you all the good things about John Cartwright. Any great leader leaves behind a legacy. John, you fought for diverse communities in Toronto and York Region. You fought for workers. You built relationships and you are a capacity builder. You pick it, you march, you rally, you educate, and you agitate. He feels very deeply about the self-emancipation of working people, the self-emancipation of the working class. He's not a leader who sees it's his job to make change on behalf of people, but he feels it's his job to really empower or help to empower people to make change for themselves. He would have stewards assemblies where a thousand stewards and activists would come together, conferences where we dig deeply into the question of how to bring anti-racist perspectives and policies into our workplaces huge get-togethers, conferences on uh, the good jobs for all, or green economy. This is the method in which he worked. The whole family were coal miners and really were strong in workers' rights. His grandfather on his mother's side was a labour leader in Blackpool, and his mother talks about going door to door to collect the dues because, of course, there was no checkoffs. John uh, joined the military reserves when he was a teenager. What really bothered him was the racism and also the warmongering. He left and went and participated in producing Guerrilla Newspaper, which many will remember was a, a militant newspaper in the early 70s in Toronto. John's whole family is so proud of him. His three kids, Trevor, Evan, Erica, and of course, myself. Of course, the labor movement is a community that we both belong to. And it is John's family. It's so important to him. John has always been proud to say he's a carpenter by trade. As an apprentice woodworker, John saw a colleague treated unfairly. It was a non-union shop and this unfairness helped propel him into organizing in the labor movement. He joined Carpenters Local 27. Later, he ran and won his first elected office in the early 1980s. My earliest memory of John was fighting for public transit at the City of Toronto uh, in the early 1990s when there were few jobs and where union members were out of work and we needed to build a city and we needed subways. And he was one of them that put it all together and said that we need to make sure that we build our city, provide union jobs so that people can live in Toronto. Uh, eventually, John left the building trade and moved on to the Labour Council. And he, he never wavered. He continued to do what, uh, uh, helping working people. So I met John when he was running for Toronto York Region Labour Council president. And he talked to me about his vision. He wanted to build stronger union power in the city of Toronto and York Region with more engagement with activists, local leadership, but also with an inclusive lens. And he brought many other diverse leadership to the Labour Council Executive Board. And that was very early on in his mandate. I'm thinking right now about working um, with you on Hotel Workers Rising a really innovative community labor coalition that the Labor Council built with Unite Here to raise the standards in the hotel industry. And that was an incredible opportunity. Uh, John and I were in basements talking to Latin American community media, um, got to uh, go really deep in, into uh, places where we could find allies to stand with hotel workers at that time. Uh, you've been a friend to the hospitality workers uh, uh, workers in the GTA uh, who are mostly people of color, immigrants, and you've always been there, six o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock at night, no matter what time you need it. The $10 minimum wage campaign was something that John was very committed to. He understood that so many people, particularly outside unions, were living on a pittance. And this campaign was hugely important for the broader working class in our city. We had meetings that took place in Parkdale, in Malvern, in Rexdale, where ordinary people were coming forward, hundreds of them, just talking about the lives they were living and the fact that they were not making enough money to live a decent way in this city. It won in the sense that it raised that uh, minimum wage 28%, and I think a real accomplishment of John and the Labor Council. 
It was about a decade ago, and the, the Good Jobs for All uh, coalition formed out of a conference. I think the coming together of uh, over a thousand trade unionists and community folks in one location, brainstorming and strategizing, it gave people a sense of hope. Or what you saw was the three crises that intersected with each other. You saw the financial crises, you saw the environmental crisis, and a racial crisis. And these three comes together in creating a new pathway for labor and community to come together. I, I credit uh, John for his vision and also his tenacity in building and bringing all these folks together. The Leadership Institute that John has created in the city is probably one of the most important things he has done, of course, recognizing we have to continue to regenerate new leadership and to aspire them and build the confidence of them to ensure they have a place, of course, and a role in the movement in this great city. Who else is coming up through the ranks? Who else can we mentor and support to be strong leaders, the next leaders, the next generation, but also the next generation of inclusive leaders? Of course, he brings all these leadership together from a variety of affiliates to partake in a couple of weeks of training, but also an opportunity to build their skills and their ability. And what's more important, of course, they build a relationship with each other, but equally they appreciate, of course, the important work we all have to do in the city. John sees where, where we should be, and he empowers each of us as individuals about how we can get there. I want to be very honest. He was this scary white dude in, like, the the middle of this scary labor movement and I knew nothing about I remember our first meeting and with all the big wigs at the table, it was just so intimidating. But you sat beside me and you made sure that I had everything that I needed to be able to negotiate and to represent the community. I was learning from you. You were teaching me about the labor movement in my early days and our, our beer market sessions were amazing. Really want to get back to that, by the way, so don't think I forgot about that. I met John in 2003 when he came to Rexville and asked for my help with an important school trustee race. So we worked together and got the progressive candidate elected. Then I told him that labor shouldn't come to places like Rexdale when a race is upon us and that places like Rexdale needed labor support all the time. Well, he responded with, great, why don't you do it, and hired me as the executive director for Labor Community Services. John Cartwright called me and said, to me, you call us, your time is up. This is your meeting night where you're gonna go back to the local union. I said to John, really John, I, 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 I really don't wanna get back into this thing. And his word to me by John was, so you're gonna let them win. Well, that was enough to get me going back to the local union. Would you believe the next election I was elected to a business representative and also to the executive of the local? And he was very good at pulling and tugging on others. Bring your, bring your, you know, your gift, right, to, to this movement, to this storehouse. Let's build something special. He brought other labor leaders together on many issues, whether it be anti-Black racism or be it confronting Islamophobia or other forms of injustice towards migrants. Brother Joe Cartwright stand up for the Muslim community in Canada. And uh, in a confession of OFL, he started with Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In 2009, when we had many protests uh, against the Tamil genocide, not only he came to those rallies, he also brought other labor leaders to understand what the Tamils were going through. During 2020, several nooses were found on construction sites. John came up with a declaration for inclusive workplaces, and he moved those policies with the different unions and brought it to the city of Toronto and got the mayor involved. And as a result, there is now a firm framework that is in place that ensures that no racism will be accepted on the job site and in the workplace. For the last quarter of a century, our labor movement and our environmental movement have worked closely together to say if we want climate justice, working people also must have a future for themselves and their communities 
we are saying to our indigenous sisters and brothers, we recognize that you are the root of the solutions, that we reach out to each other in every community, in every background, in every occupation, say, we will leave nobody behind. We will build a world based on economic justice, social justice, racial justice, and climate justice. Solidarity, sisters and brothers. John has interwoven all of the green economy into his life's work. And working with Leck and Steve Shellhorn, they have created a new little institute. John is a great boss to work for. He's accessible, consistent, and willing to listen to all of my great ideas. Working with community in Mount Dennis Weston, also to move into uh, pre-apprentice construction training the building up of the Trade Links program and several other programs, and also the work uh, with Working Green 2050, which uh, is to build support among unions and uh, their workers for a carbon-free economy by 2050. The Toronto Community Benefits Network is a community labour coalition who have come together to ensure that whenever major infrastructure projects are being built in local neighborhoods, that people from historically disadvantaged communities and equity-seeking groups, Black, Indigenous, racialized peoples, newcomers, are able to get access to the jobs and opportunities that are being created. This wouldn't have happened without the leadership of people like John Cartwright. He's put his personal and professional reputation on the line to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion in the construction industry. With John's leadership as President of Labour Community Services, Board of Directors, and Toronto and York Region Labour Council, we deepen the social solidarity between communities and labour, and fought for a just society for all. And that's the mission statement for Labour Community Services. John's list of accomplishment is long, but let me pick a few items such as promoting equity and access, raising awareness of environmental problems, and addressing poverty in the community. I, I want to thank you, John, for everything that you have taught me. I will miss our many conversations and sometimes arguments. So one of the other things that was a priority for John was how we changed the face of leadership of the civic leaders in Toronto and York Region. And so we had a conference leading into municipal elections each time, encouraging people to think about why politics were important, how it affects you, not only in your community, with your family, but inside your workplace, but then why you may want to consider also running as a candidate for city council or school board. I'm going to miss you coming into my office or giving me a call saying, Mike, I heard about this thing, and then throwing 101 different ideas uh, at me in, in such an exciting way that it just makes you want to work harder. It makes you want to do more and it makes you want to have a bigger impact. So we need that, that, that type of accountability at City Hall, and you were there making sure everything that was happening at City Hall was completely accountable to the racialized and the marginalized community. I have so many stories of John Cartwright appearing before council committees, uh, arguing in smaller meetings that we need jobs and we need them to be union jobs. In the early decades, the Labour Council built campaigns for better working conditions and vital public services. In looking at the amazing contributions of women and men over 150 years, the 150th anniversary was truly a highlight of his career as president. Whenever he's trying to get a point across or build consensus or encourage people, he always brings up history about what was done previously what worked, what didn't. He knows the players from many different unions and how it all fits together. I don't know, has everyone been on the receiving end of one of John's history lessons? People have come to this country for generations. We've come from over 194 countries in this world. For 146 years. 1871. I actually have found them incredibly insightful and valuable. John is a real visionary. He's always looking to the next step, the next campaign. What do we have to do?
to keep the lives of working people strong and secure. But he also actually does the work on the ground, and that combination is so important. Once he gets a plan, he is on that, and you are riding that bus with him from beginning to end. I'll tell you, having called him, I texted him a couple of days ago, asking him to be out at uh, 7 a.m. on a picket line Monday morning when he had many other things to do, he was there. And that's always been my experience of John. We will be with you one day longer, one day stronger. One day longer, one day stronger. Brother, when did you sleep? You know that you're going to get emails at 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning. At any time of the day and any day of the week. John's not one to say, hey, I saw the Leafs one last night. That might be the first 10 seconds of it. And then this is what I was thinking. And when he tells you, I, I was wondering, get ready. Every time that I got your call, always was worried. Should I answer or not? Because I knew when I answered, there was an <laughs> ask behind that. You're a guy with a great vision, you know, a multiracial working class movement with allies on the inside and elected office uh, making substantive change while there's mobilizing on the street. TCBN is strong, the Labour Council, we have uh, membership based groups like ACORN and Now Progress Toronto. Working on the big social justice issues that impact Canada, democracy, environment, anti-racism while at the same time promoting strong uh, union rights. That's John Cartwright. That's the legacy that he leaves behind for all of us to emulate. I believe he's one of the most instrumental labor leaders in all of North America. I think the vision that he has brought to our labor movement, the ability to work with people, to listen to people, and come together for common cause, common strategy, has made our labor movement here in Toronto one of the most effective that I've seen anywhere in North America. I joke that I can't believe I get paid to do this job because it is so satisfying. It is so much of what I believed in all my adult life. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for being part of this amazing journey of the working class in this largest urban center uh, in this country. Uh, à bientôt. We will, we will see you in the whirlwind. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, John Cartwright, for everything that you have done for all of us. It's uh, been great being able to lean on you. Uh, I'm going to miss you for sure. We're all going to miss you. We wish you a long and happy retirement. I want to thank you, John, for everything that you have taught me. It was a privilege and honor to fight with you. Thank you, my friend. Wish you all the best. You'll be popping by, bringing on some history and so we can figure out how we can continue to solve the problems of the world for the working class. Solidarity, brother. We will see each other in this struggle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The union forever defending our rights Down with the black legs who work as unite With our brothers and our sisters Together we will stand there Power in a year. Solidarity forever. Thank you very much.